I, Ptolemy, have commissioned this great lighthouse of Alexandria. Yes, my lord, your name shall live forever. Time passes and the name of the pharaoh crumbles away to leave this block. Sostrates, son of Dexiphanes, of Knidos, on behalf of all mariners, to the saviour gods. Hello and welcome to another episode of Just In Time Worlds with me, your host, Marie Mullaney. We don't know for certain if it's true that Sostros used that skit that I demonstrated in the opening, where he put his own name underneath the name of Ptolemy in order to have his name be the message that lived through the ages on the lighthouse of Alexandria. But it is a great urban legend that comes to us from ancient times. It is also the topic of today's video. I want to talk to you about controlling the narrative, using propaganda, spinning the story, all of it in a fantasy context. If you like this kind of fantasy world building, please do consider smashing that subscribe button. And if you want to help me in making more of these videos, you can buy my book or hit my Ko-fi page. More details about that at the end of the video. I also do have a Discord server where you can connect with me and other world builders. Okay, let's get cracking. So after that fun intro of an architect using the flow of information in order to make sure his name lived longer than the pharaoh's name, let's turn our attention to the feel-good book of the century, George Orwell's 1984, and its use of propaganda to control the narrative. If you have not read 1984, I wouldn't worry, you don't read it for the plot. The book's hero, Winston Smith, is a minor party functionary living in London. There are only three nations left in the world and they are pretty much constantly at war with each other, which you learn is by design. See, it's easier to control a population consumed by war than an educated population who is asking questions about why you're wasting their tax money. So the three nations remaining on earth war with each other all the time. Winston belongs to the outer party and his job is to rewrite history in the Ministry of Truth, bringing it in line with current political thinking. He literally erases people from existence, just removes all reference to them and boom, they're gone. What I want to highlight from 1984 is the importance of using information to control the population when you are an oppressive government. If you want a further analysis of 1984's plot, I recommend Overly Sarcastic Productions summary and I will link that in the description down below. Orwell wasn't writing fantasy, of course. He was predominantly writing social commentary. However, it serves very well to illustrate how a government can brutally use propaganda to control a population. A more classically fantasy example of this comes to us from the pen of Guy Gavriel Kay in the novel Tagana. Don't worry about spoilers, I'm not going to spoil Tagana for you because the flow of control is all in the starting setup. Two powerful sorcerers, Brandon, the king of Ygrath, and Alberico, an independent warlord from the empire of Brabadior, have conquered the peninsula of independent lands which includes Tigana, and have divided it into an uneasy balance of power. Tigana most ably resisted Brandon. In a crucial battle, Brandon's son was killed. In retaliation for this, he attacked Tigana and crushed it savagely. Following his victory, he used his magic to remove the name and history of Tagana from the minds of the population, renaming it to Lower Corte. Only those born in Tagana before the invasion can hear or speak its name or remember it as it was before. As far as everyone else is concerned, Tagana is not even a place. It is a great starting point for a story, and overcoming this handicap requires a lot of ingenuity on the part of the rebels who are the heroes of our story. 
So having your characters battle against a government that is using propaganda to control the population is a great story mechanic. It allows you to have your characters need to find out the truth and then somehow communicate that truth to the larger population. It gives them a constant oppressive force to battle against, which provides ongoing tension in your story. Of course, in the fantasy genre, you can go further than we can go in the real world in terms of propaganda by using magic to increase the reach of your propaganda, literally making people forgotten people by using magic. This creates a fundamental obstacle which your main characters or players in a role-playing game have to overcome before they can overthrow the government or whatever it is that they're trying to do in the plot. If you like this kind of analysis of the classics against the fantasy novels, please do hit the thumbs up button below and let's move on to controlling the elite. Controlling the elite has a somewhat different aim from controlling the population. See, normally it's the government that's seeking to control the population. When you're controlling the elite, you're normally a much smaller group that is trying to achieve some kind of aim through the use of misinformation on the elite. There's a show on Netflix called Bridgerton, which is a Regency show, that is actually quite a good example of this. Lady Whistledown is actually trying to control the elite, the nobles of the society, by means of the gossip that she distributes to them in written form. So she is trying to shape the narrative of the elite of her society. The great thing about this as a use of propaganda is that you can have this be in the hands of your main characters. Your main characters can be trying to shape the conversation by controlling the elite, in which case their opposition is somebody finding out about their plot, so they have to constantly be on their toes and protect themselves from being discovered. Or you can switch that up and have your characters be part of the elite who are being controlled by a small group, and they can slowly discover clues about the identity of the small group or they can be attempting to chase down the small group and counteract their agenda. You can even set it up so that you have an opposition group with an agenda and you have the main characters with their agenda and both are battling for control over the elite. This makes for a really fascinating story from a political perspective. So if you're trying to write a political story or if you are running a political role-playing game, it's a very interesting aspect to explore this control of the elite agenda by means of propaganda directed at the elite. For an example of how this is done for the good of society, let's turn to Isaac Asimov's Foundation series. Now, if you have not yet read the Foundation series, you are missing a fundamental building block in your foundation of science fiction. And I'll see myself out. Anyway, foundation. The foundation was set up by Henry Sheldon after he built a model based on a science called psychohistory. This model predicted that the galactic empire was nearing end of life and would soon collapse, leading to unimaginable chaos and suffering in the galaxy. In an attempt to shorten this period of chaos, he put together the first foundation and crucially, from their perspective, all knowledge of psychohistory was lost. But Sheldon left behind these holograms in a time vault that would open every 50 years and help guide the foundationers in making good choices to get a stable government back up and running as fast as possible. What they didn't know is that the knowledge of psychohistory was not lost. There is a second foundation that keeps that knowledge alive, and they're actually manipulating the holograms shown to the first foundation in order to keep the model up to date and get the galaxy-wide empire back as predicted, because psychohistory requires constant adjustment. So, 
instead of an oppressive government, you've got a well-meaning organization keeping secrets from the elite, the first foundationers, for their own good in order to guide them to a future utopia. This kind of story where you have the good guys attempting to control the narrative is great because it sets up a fundamental thematic battle. Is it right to keep people in ignorance if your aims are good? So you are aiming for galactic stability and peace. This is a good aim. Are you justified in keeping secrets and in controlling people by means of controlling the narrative with such a noble aim? And that is a great thematic question to ask. So we've spoken about the oppressive government and we've spoken about the control of the elite. But what happens when control of information fails? To explore this point, I want to turn to our own history, specifically to imperialist Russia and the publication of a novel, What is to be Done? What is to be Done is an 1863 novel written by Russian philosopher, journalist and literary critic Nikolai Chernevsky. The chief character is Vera Pavlovna, a woman who escapes the control of her family and an arranged marriage to seek economic independence. The novel advocates the creation of small socialistic cooperatives based on the Russian peasant commune, but one that is orientated towards industrial production. The author promoted the idea that the intellectual's duty was to educate and lead the masses in Russia along a path to socialism that bypassed capitalism and capitalistic development completely. Imperialist Russia had some seriously heavy-handed senses. He was in prison when he received permission to write this novel. He wrote the novel in prison and he submitted it to the censors in prison. And it was approved to be published. I can only assume that the censors were blind drunk or completely hungover, that they completely missed the thematic elements of this book, which spoke to the overthrow of the Tsar and the rise of socialist communism in Russia. The book is so direct that it became Lenin's favorite book, and he carried it in his breast pocket. The lesson from this failure of censorship is, I think, twofold. One, if your censorship does fail, the consequences can be extremely dire. And two, it doesn't need to be a fateful, terrible, magical reason for failure. Sometimes people just mess up, even if every element is there and they really shouldn't be messing up they still manage to mess up. And that is my take on controlling the narrative in a fantasy world and how you can use it to further your plot and your world building in the stories that you seek to tell. I hope that you enjoyed that episode of Just In Time Worlds. Please do hit the thumbs up button if you did. If you really enjoyed this and you want to help me make more of these videos, you can buy my book, The Hidden Blade by Marie M. Mullaney, or you can hit my Ko-fi page where you can make a one-off donation, buy a membership, or even buy a product.